When we first set out to read the Quran, we had all these plans and new segments for the show that could spin off of it. We figured that there'd be new skits reenacting bizarre Quranic tales, whole new slate of Quran stories for kids, not to mention the various diatribes its themes might inspire. But as we've been learning all year, there are no tales, there are no stories, and the only themes are, I can write good, do you guys remember the Bible, and fuck the Jews. And while that's plenty enough to carry a Mel Gibson movie, I don't mind admitting <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to carry a tri-weekly segment with it. Yeah, it started off like a drunk guy telling everyone at the bar about the glory days of killing Jewish people and raping nine-year-olds. Yep. But it managed to go downhill from there, which is <laughs> impressive. Now it's the same guy repeating the same stories, but he didn't notice when everyone walked away, and he just kept on going. Yeah, right. And now the bar's closed, and he's talking to the dumpster out back, like, poking <laughs> it. Listen to me. If you didn't like my bachelor party, you could have left at any time, Heath, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but guys, think of all the time we'll get to explain that we've read each chapter of the Quran with commentary and extensive thought, only for it totally not to matter, because we didn't read it in Arabic. Come on, that'll be yeah. fun, right? <laughs> Great, mm -hmm. that's so clear. Twitter fights. And of course, this counts as <laughs> sickness and or health, so I've got Lucinda on a technicality here. Welcome back. See, Anna, it all starts off fancy dresses in Ireland, and a couple decades later, you're reading a deadly literate guy rant about Moses. <laughs> the Have dresses are Such mean. a cliche. <laughs> yeah. So, why don't you start us off with Surah 35, The Creator. All right, so we start this one off with a bizarre visual. According to verse 1, angels have two three or four pairs of wings yeah mm -hmm. so just start off picturing an eight-winged angel and nothing <laughs> else in this surah will seem strange in comparison i guess where do the other ones even go right well, I don't what's know. weird about this is that? in my version at least they don't tell us like why it's not like oh warrior <laughs> angels get this many wings and helper angels get this many wings it's just like look <laughs> the angels they come in three varieties we got tall we got grande we got vente <laughs> <laughs> just covered in wings it's just a big pile of wings <laughs> and that's bullshit because there should clearly be a Trenta sized ice angel. That, <laughs> yeah. That's why I worship Starbucks and not Allah. Plus, you get semen lattes. Well, that's <laughs> obvious. It's really just a question of the math <laughs> and the semen. Verse 5 reminds us not to let the deceiver deceive us. And I can't help but thinking, what the fuck were you thinking naming him that then? Right? Aren't you admitting defeat up front? <laughs> or is that like calling the fat guy tiny? Uh, I, could, I, yeah. I, I feel like this is just Muhammad telling us not to watch the magician. <laughs> right. <laughs> Comes in doing card tricks. No, no, no. I, I'll tell you something. I'm going to tell you guys the story of Moses. <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, I think Lucinda makes a good point. It, it definitely seems like you could have named the super evil guy something besides satan the deceiver right like if it was just steve you know he might have made some different life choices <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying or just don't create an evil demon of the world well that and is that solves the naming problem also right that there. but yeah jeeves can't be an assassin we also get the uh the dust and semen mixed thoroughly recipe mm -hmm. for making humans again and i just want to point it out to underscore how disingenuous the muslims are who claim this thing has science in it right 90 percent of the time when this book brings up how humans came into being it starts with dust and then they quote the one mention that kind of gets it rightish yeah. yeah i think i'm starting to see the pattern okay so get, hear me out here jewish apologetics don't even bother lying. Like, yeah, eh, book says that, but it's uh, he was saying it to Larry, and it's in my perfect book of morality. <laughs> Christians, right. they lie, right? Uh, but in the way you can't prove. Like, oh, look at these people who believe Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. Are they lying? But Islam is just like, yup, this book has all the parables in it, and babies are made out of fun dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you can see the progression going. <laughs> Actually, recently, I've been picturing more like a like a white Russian with non-dairy creamer. Okay. Like with a fetus inside. <laughs> but um, one other thing on this verse, it, it says that nobody lives shorter or longer than Allah intended, uh. except the people that do. It, right. But, but he writes their names in a book, which is super easy for him because he's omnipotent, except for when he's wrong and has to write. Why mention that? Like in case of an audit? What, is this, <laughs> what do you have that book for? One you guy Shalif in the bets. corner. <laughs> like, no, remember me? I wrote it in the book. I wrote it in the book. <laughs> well, I also loved in verse 12 when you get an idea of Allah's geographic knowledge. He's doing an analogy between salt water and fresh water, but he seems to think that there are only two seas in the world. 
Yeah, right. Almost like a 10 year old could prove this book wasn't divinely inspired or something. It's weird. <laughs> well, I know of at least one nine year old. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, she, she'd argue. And uh, then in the next verse, we learn that God stopped the days from having the wrong amount of hours. Oh, yeah, right. You know, because during the summer, there's more daylight. And if God hadn't subtracted that much extra time from <laughs> yeah. the night, uh, everything would have been all fucked up, apparently. So he fixed it. He was the one who figured out that uh, 100 is the right percentage for <laughs> whole things. Oh, Good that's God. A genius. <laughs> oh, well. It's more of that science. And then we get more of the, uh, well, if there's no God, why isn't everything the same color apologetic, mm -hmm. which is honestly one of his strongest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't want to forget that uh, all colors matter. That's, that's important. <laughs> Good. Oh, he, right. That's your one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm going through our YouTube comments, and apparently we're only afraid to admit this is totally right because we won't debate a guy whose profile picture is anime boobs. Yes, so. that's <laughs> I'm torn. I'm torn. Yes, I understand it, yeah. And apparently that's the end of a thought or something because now it's on to Surah 36, Yasin, Yasin. Yeah, and if we had to sum this one up in three words, they'd all be yada. <laughs> right. Ridiculous. Well, we did get some good news in verse 12, though, kind of in a roundabout way. So it's telling us the same old shit about how we're all going to burn in hell if we don't start Musliming. But, but, but to bolster its warning, it says that all your deeds are recorded in, quote, a clear book. Mm. Now, that sounds bad until you consider that Allah considers the fucking Quran a clear book. <laughs> yeah, just imagine me at the gates of Muslim heaven, Muslim St. Peter's perusing a book that looks like Eli's gam notes, trying to figure out what it says on the <laughs> scathing athlete. <laughs> it says here you uh, mesistrated on a church. <laughs> um, I'm at a loss, honestly. Was someone eating wings while they wrote this? Sorry. And ready? Sorry. Sorry. It was, it was Monday night. <laughs> what? What? No, no, don't run a spell check. That'll that'll make it worse. <laughs> um, I, I think that was I think that was supposed to be menstruated on a chicken, but uh, I was just making a note to myself. Um, fuck! Did he just run past you? <laughs> that is that keeps happening. That that is on me again. And look. We don't say this often enough, but Muhammad is a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. That's the end of our Christmas special. <laughs> we learned something here today. Now, every single apologetic he offers assumes its premise, right? Every single one basically reduces to, well, if God doesn't exist, how do you explain the existence of God? And we're talking about a person so unfamiliar with thinking that he doesn't even know how it works. <laughs> yeah. Muhammad is to other religious authors as boxing commentators are to other sports commentators. Like, <laughs> he punch, punch, make fall down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want a version of Madden football with Muhammad announcing. It's like, got to watch the snap. Got to watch... Here, here's a guy who sees worse because the Jews stole his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the result is God coming off as comically stupid. In verse 40, he has God saying, I've killed millions of people in an effort to prove I exist and still nothing. Better kill some more. Yeah, right, right. I, I, I've stacked up 80 Cheerios and still no world <laughs> peace. <laughs> It's like it's going to take 100. And, and our desperate efforts to catch Muhammad saying something different continuous or a 37, the ranks, or those who set the ranks or drawn up in ranks, depends on who you ask. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky stuff. They have no idea what the words mean. Okay, no. so I want to start with the exact words from the two different translations I'm using. One of them says, at the beginning here, by the aligners aligning and the drivers driving. Not and, what, not sure what that means, but um, the Saudi version says... By those angels ranged in ranks or rows, by those angels who drive the clouds in a good way. That doesn't so, even it's not even So apparently Arabic words are just like vague suggestions, like a <laughs> script from Curb. But but that's no problem <laughs> when you're writing the clearest book in the universe. Apparently so. not. Yeah, it doesn't Should slow you down a lick. No. And speaking of clearest book in the universe, it then goes on to tell us that despite the rumors we may have heard to the contrary... Demons definitely can't hear what the angels in outer space are talking about. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, and if they do, God would set them on fire. Yes, yes, so, right, yeah, right. I was wondering what would He's happen. He's got a plan. He's got a magic missile, which, which he follows up by saying, like, isn't that amazing? And can you believe <laughs> other people think that's a silly thing to believe? That the stars <laughs> are the cone of silence from Get Smart? What's wrong with these motherfuckers? <laughs> 
And if, if you're thinking to yourself, uh, flaming space demons, this chapter sounds promising, then you've learned nothing from this yeah. segment. Because that's all we're going to hear about the flaming space demons. And now it's back to, well, who the fuck do they think created the mountains and stopped the uh. earthquakes then? He also introduces a new euphemism for dust a la Jack Dauphin in verse 12 when he says humans were made from sticky clay. Oh, sticky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently the creation of human beings was like Swayze and Demi Moore and Ghost. <laughs> so it was just a la by himself, like just jerking it onto a potter's <laughs> Yes. Nut for sauce flying everywhere. <laughs> Spin art. <laughs> Song is still the same, though. Song is still the same. <laughs> Also, did anybody else notice that Muhammad refers to himself as a mad poet in this one? Mm -hmm. Is that just me? Yeah. Like, he's heard it so much, he's starting to dig it or something. He's like, yeah, I'm the mad poet. <laughs> you, you hear that? They call me asshole. You hear that? I'm the hole from which nobody's ass escapes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. This is great. <laughs> Now I want to hear someone just read the Quran at a slam poetry event. It's just like oh, Bob Dylan goes up there. Verily, don't you see? The Jews will burn for eternity. No man on earth can rhyme like me. My I'm in. And, and by the way, if you thought Muhammad's hell descriptions were bad, wait until you hear his heaven descriptions. He basically describes it as a dinner party with non-alcoholic beer where everybody laughs about the people who used to doubt their religion. I, I I would take the overcooked soup of damnation, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, but hey, this is where we learn that, quote, and this is my version, <laughs> and with them are the large-eyed ones with modest refraining glances, fair like a sheltered egg, end quote. <laughs> That's the actual quote <laughs> yes. in my Quran. <laughs> fair like sexy. a sheltered egg. Is that like an egg that doesn't see the wire until it's <laughs> in college? I don't know what that Sounds like a poem I wrote for Madge. Anyway, uh, my, uh, my copy makes it sound like heaven is a circle of people uh, sitting under a bridge, passing around a bottle of like, white Zinfandel from a gas station. I mean, <laughs> add 72 virgins and that's a middle school party. I <laughs> we also meet the Zakam tree in this chapter. I guess, yeah. Apparently it's a tree that grows in hell with a bunch of devil head fruits. Seems like something we could have spent a little more time on earlier, or later, maybe, or or later. Just don't. You know, just if you're going to have <laughs> the Zakam tree, let's that, let's linger there. Right. The let's talk about and, it. And, and can we I, talk about how thoroughly he fucks up the Jonah story right after this? By the way, he has Jonah as this like righteous dude who is following God's orders and was saved by a like. Read the fucking story, bro. It's 686 words long. Have somebody read it to you. <laughs> this is Muhammad's version of, like, I looked at the front cover and read the back cover of Where the Red Fern Grows for my book report. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Might as well be a shoebox diorama with just, like, a fern spray-painted red, <laughs> like a G.I. Joe with Jonah written on it, and a goldfish snack. <laughs> Again, I'm in. Wait, then he knocks down Christianity in one fell swoop by asking if you've ever seen a female angel. That's right. Not sure how that all adds up, but what? for whatever it's worth, I have not indeed seen a female angel. So maybe he's got a point there. I don't Christianity know. Christianity might be a... Uh... Bullshit. I've met many Shit. women named Angel, often with a tattoo mm. of their name on their tit, so that oh, well, one that's... of us remember. I'm not sure who we're supposed <laughs> to remember. Okay, but, but hold on, though. i, I got to jump in here. Um... I remember a time when I was looking through a, a girly magazine, and there's my homeroom angel on the pages <laughs> in between. My blood ran cold. My memory had just been sold. My angel was the centerfold. Oh, my well, angel was the centerfold. So, <laughs> just in the last two segments, the Quran got debunked by, uh, let's think about it, three little pigs, mm -hmm. a nine-year-old rape victim, and now Jay Giles band. So, <laughs> uh, not a great song. Thing you'd find in Andy Wilson's bedroom. <laughs> getting ready okay they, yeah right right for deportation and with all of that important <laughs> wisdom out of the way we pass over the halfway mark of today's reading and get to surah 38 which is titled sad but not in that way i guess no no it doesn't make any sense so we start with a new rephrasing of muhammad's only apologetic this time he says nobody in history has ever believed that i was the messenger of god and where are all the people in history dead 
sense. <laughs> they didn't believe. If you were alive today, Muhammad would be the healthiest president <laughs> ever elected. I was thinking the same shit. Right? And if you want a clear idea how stupid Muhammad is, consider what passes for wisdom in his mind, right? So he tells the story about how wise David was. And he, he, here's his example. Like, two guys show up. Guy A has 99 sheep. Guy B only has one. And the guy with 99 sheep is like, I want his sheep too. David says, nope, that wouldn't be fair. That is wisdom to this <laughs> nose flosser. And what's worse, in my version, the guy is like, my brother convinced me to give him my sheep, hey, well, right, but now yeah. I want it back. And David's like, yeah, you seem like you're great with sheep. You <laughs> oversold how smart this story is. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, I rounded up. And the Saudi version specifically mentions that David doesn't even listen to the guy with all the sheep after the first time. Right. Who, first of all, sounds like a job creator, mm -hmm. honestly. But more importantly, he was probably about to give a really good explanation if I had to get, like, listen, this guy was literally fucking the sheep. <laughs> uh, not going to get into the details. Give it back. But but he's going to rape the sheep again. La, 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 give it back. Sheer no evil, see no evil. I'm David. <laughs> Oh, and of course, if you were hoping for a helping a self-contradiction, you get it in verse 29, where Allah says, I sent down this book for people to ponder over its meaning. Uh. That's a quote. That's the exact opposite of making things clear, bro. Exact <laughs> opposite. Like you just turn to someone, okay, you know what? The book's a mystery now. It's a mystery. <laughs> and then all along. He also rewrites the Job story so that Satan takes all the blame for evil shit that God does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they added a domestic abuse theme that I did not remember. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, Job asked God, God for help because Satan was torturing him, right? So God said, like, fine, here's a bundle of sticks. Just beat up your wife and stop complaining. That's <laughs> in this book. They added that. It's, yeah, they that, that they did. And if you were just thinking to yourself, man, sure has been a while since we heard the story of Satan refusing to bow to Adam. Fear not, as clearly Muhammad was thinking the same thing. <sighs> and I'd love to add some commentary on Surah 39 as well, but Absolutely nothing is said in it. This is the toughest so, reading we've ever fucking brutal. done yet. Ugh. Just seven pages of bad people go to hell, good people go to heaven, and I'm good people. Uh, not even a Moses flashback. It's no, bullshit. in this uh, one. Yeah. But hey, we learned that every kind of parable is in this book again, and that this is an Arabic book, quote, free from torturous wording, uh, end quote. Yeah. Not really sure. Yeah. Maybe going with a with Ted Cruz definition. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to replace this segment with drowning me for 20 minutes every three weeks, I know that I and several people on Twitter will be up for it. <laughs> what? Is, is Milo back on Twitter? <laughs> oh, huh. All right, well, I guess we could basically skip over 39 and get on to our final chapter of the night, Surah 40, The Forgiver. And you're not going to get much more out of this story either. No, uh -huh. and ju just to give you an example of how little is being said here, verse 4 opens up by saying, quote, only those who deny the truth dispute God's signs, end quote. <laughs> so basically, only the people that disagree with us argue about this shit. <laughs> but, you think? But, but this particular surah has an unusually high amount of, like, don't be tricked into feeling sorry for non-Muslims. So that's what makes it unique, I guess. Oh, okay. Right. Huh. But, but sure. what makes it unique is, like, the way they prop it up is always, like, God wouldn't damn them if he didn't know that they weren't going to believe in them. So, like, it... So, yeah. <laughs> it's like the two <laughs> solving the trolley problem. You just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically... Allah is like a confused parent who doesn't understand how punishing works. He he catches all the atheists smoking, and he's like, "Okay, now you have to smoke this whole pack." Mm -hmm. And we're like, yep. "Oh, oh, fuck! Wow, that was that was awful. Uh, we're totally gonna stop smoking and be Muslim, Ron." And he says, "No, no, you you just live in a European airport lounge from now on. There's, <laughs> there's no useful purpose to my actions. You just all smoke now." I have no follow up. Where was that parable, guys? Yeah. But okay, so, so but if I'm reading this right, there may be a loophole that can keep atheists out of Muslim hell. Okay, so check this out. In verse 11, Muhammad has all the hellbound people asking God why he's making them go to hell, and he says, "This is because when God alone was invoked, you denied the truth. Yet when others were associated with him, you believed in them." So, I'm going to ask Andrew to make sure, but I think we might be in the clear. <laughs> so like are they saying if I buy Majid Nawaz a sandwich, I get to go to heaven? I'm just saying, the soup <laughs> sing sounded bad. Pascal's wager. <laughs> it's true. And uh, then in verse 25, Muhammad uh, accidentally gives out some genocide tips. He says, remember when the polytheists tried to wipe out the pre-Muslims, but they forgot to kill all the women? Hey, wait a minute. Don't write that down. Don't write. Fuck. Edit. Edit. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Control Z. Damn it. <laughs> 
He also keeps specifically condemning people who dispute God's message with no authority. And I'm dying to know what the fuck that means. Yeah, right. Who does have that authority? <laughs> Can you apply for a card or something? Do I need a license? Yeah, like, a, like a double O kind of thing, maybe? I don't right. know. I'll look into it. Well, yeah, and if you want to speed up the process, I think there might be a gun show loophole. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to ask the world's top atheist. <laughs> Pam Geller? Is that <laughs> no, 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 she died. She died. <laughs> we also get the 50th contradictory explanation of how babies are made here. And I only bring it up because after the Stone Age embryology, it says, and God made you an infant and then he made you an old person, except when he killed you young. There's that, of course. This could not more clearly be thinking out loud. Well, to, to the extent that there was thinking involved. Sure. Right, sure. Yeah. The Koran will fix it in post. And hey, they have. Yeah, they they have. have. Yeah. 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 Nobody points there. out the loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know that guy everyone knows who like, he doesn't know how to play whatever game. He always tries to jump in on jokes and it's just like, Hitler rape abortion. It's, no, no. <laughs> this entire book reads like a Muslim version of that guy trying to make up his own like Chuck Norris memes about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Dicks up for Aisha. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> also, we get a little more detail on our hell attire, which is good. I've been wondering what I should wear. So apparently we're all going to have iron collars. So, you know, dress accordingly, I guess. Right. right. Yeah. Going to be super Detox awkward when I show shit. up with my own collar and I'm just like, ooh, is that one sub shop? And the guy's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> This one's creeping me out. Cut it out. Get, get the ball out of your mouth. It's just college. It's just college. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't mind admitting it's getting harder and harder to excise dick jokes from this asinine jabberwocky. Yeah. But, damn it, audience, you are worth it. And if you guys need some good news, uh, we're more than two-thirds of the way through these segments and more than three-quarters of the way through this book. You sound like a doctor listing off all the kinds of cancer his patient doesn't have first. That's a good idea, though. You <laughs> should. Nice. You should do that. I'm trying. Nice. Here's the diseases you might have had that I fucked away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? That's enough to get you canonized by the Catholics. Apparently. <laughs> also, you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs>